morning, friends. Here at that 1870s homestead, and my name's Rachel. We have a big old gallon of honey, a big old bucket of honey. I'm just getting some out so I can get it started for the day to uncrystallize. This is last year's honey from our bees. And it's <clears throat> mostly clover honey. And um, at the end of the season, they get goldenrod, clover or dandelion, clover? Mostly clover, I think. And what I've learned since raising bees is both of those things are some of the quickest honeys to crystallize on you just because of the bigger pollen particles. And we don't do like a super, super, super pure filtering system or anything. We just filter it the best that we can. <clears throat> so, got the sous vide out. I'll show you how I get, how I use that to decrystallize my honey. And it'll take 24 hours, so it probably won't finish up on today's video. Um, but it's gonna be a beautiful day, I think. I haven't even had my coffee yet this morning. I'll get ready for the day, and I know one task at least I want to get done today is planting my summer crops in, uh, in one of the green stalks. I went and picked up a couple plants the other day, just a little bit, just enough for a little kitchen garden for some summertime BLTs and some fun herbs and things like that. So I'll take you guys with me on that. I do have the grandson today. We don't put our grandkids in videos, so um, I'll have to work around him and see what, what we can get accomplished together today. And how cooperative he is. Sometimes he's like really amazing at independent play. He's only, what? not even 18 months old, 18 months old, something like that. And uh, sometimes he's amazing at independent playtime when we go outside. But other times he really wants Granny to show him around. So we'll see. Maybe it'll be a nap time chore. Okay, so this is a sous vide pot. This is a temperature uh, maybe you can see it. It's kind of like I got a core down in there and it heats the water to a constant temperature. And you can put things in it. And it'll just hold a steady state temperature of 104 degrees till I want to be done with this. So you don't want to heat honey ever over like 110, um, it kills off all the beneficial uh, nutrients and bacteria and all of that good stuff, and we don't wanna do that. So I'll just set it at 104 and let it become liquid honey again. Um, all right, we are back. The next thing I'm gonna be making today is my grandson loves like oatmeal treat bars, but we're gonna try something slightly different and we're gonna make a date coconut bar. And I'm starting with a third of a cup of hemp parts. It's a little bit too much. Tea. Yeah, you got tea. He loves his tea when he comes to Granny's house. Mmm, that's good. And we're gonna do uh, what did it say? Uh, half of a cup of coconut flakes. This is just unsweetened coconut flakes. Mm, mm, yeah. Good. Yeah, mm, good. Yeah. All right. And we're going to do a fourth of a cup of cashews. You guys remember when I got these cashews at the... Okay. When I got these cashews at the discount grocery store. For what did we pay for them? A dollar fifty-nine. All right, and then ten pitted dates. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, Ew. seven, eight, nine, ten. Ew. And a tablespoon Ew. of coconut oil. Ew. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is just blend this up and then that's it. And then you just stick it in the fridge for 30 minutes. Is that loud? Is that loud? No. Yeah, a little bit. I'm just gonna keep working down and scraping down the sides so it gets, so you're basically building kind of like a paste. And it turns into these chewy date bars. Yeah. <laughs> see smushing that in and you can see like the consistency of it and it is crumbly but that date is um, really really sticky so once you put these in the refrigerator and they firm up it's gonna hold together those hemp parts have a lot of good protein uh, the cashews protein and good fats the dates are healthy sugars natural sources of sweetness Hmm? I'm not sure what, if, I don't think I know any health, direct health benefits of the coconut other than, again, a, probably a healthy fat. All right, there is our homemade date coconut bars. And then for his little fingers, I just cut them like one inch wide sticks and they, he loves these little treats. So this will be a great treat when he wakes up from his nap. Hey, hey, hey. Be nice with him. He loves Rue. Sometimes loves him too much. Okay, in the fridge we go and maybe it's getting warm enough we can head outside soon. All right, well we just got in from playing on in the dirt, doing wheelbarrow rides. I've got the green stalks prepped. He was a big helper, but we're gonna cut into the date bars and see how they turned out. It's probably been an hour or so. Oh, they cut nice and firm. <clears throat> you know what it feels like? This is gonna be weird, but it feels like suet cakes. Mm. It tastes like the inside of like a nugget candy bar. With a little chew, of course, because of the nuts. These are delicious. I would definitely, oh my gosh, that is so good. Like an Almond Joy mixed with a nougat candy bar. Todd, you've got to try these. Taste it. It's just basically dates and coconut. And some, a little bit of blended walnuts. Mm-hmm, that's good. Isn't that good? So I'm gonna cut them in little, things like this and probably just throw them in a, in a baggie in the fridge. I'm not quite sure how long that they would last, but I can't imagine that there's any reason that these would go bad like sooner than two weeks. So for that one recipe, nice size bars. One, two, three, four, five, and this one that we're eating. So six bars, a week's worth of a sweet treat. Mmm, it's so healthy for you. All right, it's almost my grandson's nap time. So we are having cheeseburgers and potatoes for lunch with Grammy's homemade ketchup. And I'll see you guys on when we get out there to finally time to plant. Okay, grandbaby just left. He did a great job helping me fill the pots. Like a couple of them have sand from his little shovels in the dirt. I just love it. And 
Um, my Cherokee purple tomatoes. The only tomato I'm going to grow this year because it's my favorite. And we are planting in the green stalks. And oddly I've gotten questions, which is funny because I get so many questions about taking the year off gardening and letting our land rest from growing food. And people say, well, aren't you going to grow in your green stalks? And I really was debating whether or not I would just more based off like not committing my time to that versus wanting to. And um, other people, <laughs> since I planted in the one green stalk, my um, peas and lettuces was like, well, I thought you weren't <laughs> growing this year. And so I am planting these um, just like I would in the garden. I'm putting them really deep, popping those bottom leaves off, and this is the regular green stalk. Okay. Um, yes, this doesn't count for like letting my land rest. The whole purpose that we're doing that is to just give our land a break, not take, take and take and take from the earth and just be good stewards of the land. It's giving us time to focus our energy on other needs and other things. Um, but I'm super excited to have some of my favorite tomatoes after all. Uh, there will be a, a few weeks out of the summer where I know I will not be home to take care of the, all of this, so I'm hoping it lasts. But another reason why we weren't planning on gardening or even green stalking this year was I didn't want to not do well at it because I don't want this to be my main focus this year. But it would be fun if, it, if we end up getting some good treats. So I just picked these up at Lowe's. I've got a basil and I learned this trick, I'm pretty sure from Jess at Res, uh, Roots and Refuge. When you go to a nursery and find like a starter pack, try to look for ones that have like two, this one has three, and then you get like double bang for your buck for the plants. So I'm just gonna gently tease these apart if I can. No, I don't think I can. Those are too, too close together. So we'll just plant those basils in. And this is just an organic um, potting soil. Um, and if you're new to green stalks, if you buy just your standard bag of potting soil, not the great big ones, just the normal bags, one of those fills up one of these green stalk containers. So I'm planting the basil around my tomatoes. I do have the green stalk little trellis attachments. So that'll be good to hold these tomatoes as they vine like out. And the other things I have, I did buy, what kind of peppers did I buy? Some just all purpose. It's raining on me already. I thought I would be able to get this done before the rain came. Um, Hang on a second, I'm not done. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the green stalk trellises will just help hold the tomatoes out um, and not shade down too much the understory. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try to rush and get this planted. I might have to come back out later. Okay, another basil. Oh man, can you guys see the rain? I don't know if you can. It's not supposed to rain until eight o'clock and it's only four o'clock. We're gonna put our peppers in here. And then I've got my seeds out too because we're gonna be doing some seed starts. My goodness, what a mess. Ooh, that rain is cold too. And this pepper already has some pepper starts at the top. I'm going to go ahead and pinch those off just so it focuses on establishing its roots and getting a good start during this transplant time. I'll do the dill by my cucumbers. And this is celery. 
we'll do some celery. Oh, you guys are still filming. Okay, so we have some very, very sad little dills that are kind of drowning. And then with these dills, I'm planting the albeit cucumber, which I have the seed packs here. This is from a new company. I've never tried their seeds before called So Right Seeds. They sent us a bunch of seeds to try. So we'll try them and we'll see how they go. I'm gonna do three in each pocket just to make sure I get some germination. And we're not growing a lot here, guys. I mean, this is just like a fresh summer eating um, kitchen garden. So not doing a ton of variety. Um, I think I'm gonna put a zucchini or two in the, one of the tiers. I recently taught a um, gardening class at our local library. And one of the things that I know was hard for me to learn as a first time gardener was not planting your seeds too deep and how that can affect whether or not your plant actually comes up and breaks the surface of the soil. And I'd be struggling to understand as a new gardener why I can't do this. It, it, I don't know how to grow plants. And oftentimes it's just because I was planting the seeds too deep when I was first starting out. So a general rule of thumb is twice as deep as the thickness of the seed. So um, something like a um, the zucchini seed that I just planted, that'll go about half an inch deep. And then the um, like if it was carrot seeds, it basically like a surface sprinkle and then rough up the soil and pat the soil down on top of it. It really doesn't take much. We will try my favorite honeydew. I don't have one pack of carrot seeds. I bet I have more in the house. So these are Nantes half longs. They should do good in the green stock. Yeah, so if you've never seen a carrot seed, let me see. I doubt it would even show up on camera. Honestly, it won't show up on camera. They are itsy, itsy bitsy. And carrots can grow about two inches apart. And then the top, I have one more to go. All of these have been planted out now. I've already done peppers and herbs and all of that good stuff. Well, let's do some cilantro. I don't have any cilantro growing yet. So nothing like some good cilantro during the summertime. All right, so a little bit of calendula. Guys, I really just don't, I don't want to grow a, a ton of food. All right, well, maybe we'll just do all the rest of the carrots in this top one. How's that sound? Pretty good, huh? I say so. All right, so I think I'm gonna start. We're in my little flower garden bed with my lilies and very, very sad rhododendron. And, oh, get in there. We'll make it bottom heavy. So this is the one with the zucchini and other things. Oops, stop, sorry. Then we'll go on with our tomato and basil. Okay, this is the celery and peppers on and the carrots oh no what <gasps> you guys i know you're screaming at me who is not screaming at me rachel your water wells oh hold on dad <laughs> oh i need help 
I just put this all together to, without the water wells on it. Oh no. What do you need? I just need you to this was the one I kept crushing. Much better. That's gonna look cute there. Yeah. All right, what do you guys think? Looks good and then I can, I know people always are thinking like the back gets shaded, but I turn it a couple times a day and we get enough morning sun this way, evening sun, afternoon overhead, it'll be fine. Now I need to just water it in. Okay, so that's me normal watering, but because I just planted seeds, especially carrots at the top, I will go in with a shower and um, water it from the top for the first few days anyway, until, oops, sorry, I almost got you guys. All right, friends, well, that is the sum of my garden. Both green stalks are planted out for the year and super happy about it. Can't wait to have that first BLT of the season. I'll come back and put my um, little trellis guards on here, probably just on the zucchini uh, layer and then the tomato layer. I actually might bring the tomato layer up one, that way they have like double protection. We'll see how it goes. Stick around though, I will do my best to keep these suckers alive this year and uh, share that all with you guys. And just thanks for coming on a day with Rachel. I'll talk to you guys later.